the uh, mission that we went out to, an orphanage called at Binson, which was about 15 miles out in what they called Indian country at the time. And uh, it was Catholic nuns and a priest, and, and they, were, they were just real fine ladies. And they had about 50 kids out there of all sorts of ages and sizes. And uh, they provided school for them as required in, in Vietnam. But the weird part about it was there was three kids assigned to each desk. We took them a lot of stuff, the hands across the sea, Red Cross packages that came. And it was funny, when you'd set up a trip to go out to, to the orphanage, uh, it was sort of a well-guarded secret because you knew you were going to get shot at going out and you knew you were going to get shot at coming back. Uh, the trucks, the Marines sandbagged them and put M60s machine guns up on the top and everybody wore flak jackets and weapons. The kids came over around the Marines because the Marines had, had candy and had goodies and, and the kids were looking for that. Uh, and unfortunately in the midst of this, one of the youngsters was up close with one of the Marines and managed to pull the pin out of a hand grenade that was on his belt. And of course the hand grenade went off and killed the Marine, killed the kid, several others in the area, injured and wounded a lot of other people, at which point everybody that was able uh, grabbed somebody that you could and hauled butt for the helicopters, and they were already cranking up. Somewhere between where we were and the bird, there was a Vietnamese came running out of the woods, and he had a rifle. And of course, nobody knew who he was or what he was, so the crew chief swung the M60 around and made short work out of him. And SOG had a variety of missions. Uh, primarily was intelligence gathering. Uh, uh, you had small teams, uh, maybe six or seven uh, indigenous mercenaries and a couple of uh, Green Beret Special Forces uh, NCOs or uh, low-ranking officers who uh, were on the team, maybe eight or nine man, eight or nine man team altogether. And uh, they did not wear military uniforms, they did not wear dog tags, they didn't wear anything, any kind of identification that would associate them with the United States government. And just like on uh, the, some of the spy movies you see, uh, we were told that they would disavow knowledge of us if we were uh, captured or uh, whatever. And. Uh, Again, you went into these operations wearing what they called sterile uniforms. Operations in Cambodia, you didn't even carry U.S. weapons. You had to carry uh, Swedish Ks or AK-47s or so on. Some of our teams actually dressed in North Vietnamese uniforms when they uh, crossed the border. Um, they gathered intelligence along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. They would be dropped uh, 20 miles into Laos, and they would move maybe four or five clicks to the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Set, set up 10 feet off of the road, uh, hide in the bushes, and then count the number of trucks that went by, or tanks, or personnel, and then back off and call airstrikes on them. Another mission that we had was POW snatch, to try and grab a prisoner of war. Uh, the uh, team leaders carried uh, uh, 22s with silencers for that purpose, and uh, that was always a secondary mission on every SOG mission that was run. If you find this power command, you flew in the right seat, and uh, and you shot. Normally, you shot rockets. Now, many guns were attached to the left left seat, but you could fire them in a stowed position. But the left seat could could just like a hose, you know, just put it wherever. And then you had both door gunners in the back, so so uh, they were just awesome when you're breaking away from a target because they they can see behind and and uh, and keep firing the target, so so you can get you know, you can get out of Dodge. And it is amazing uh, how many bullet holes you can put in a helicopter and, and not knock it down. The door gunners are worth their weight and go. The NVA forces was the organized military force that we were really going to, the Marines and the Army were going to war with all the time. 
Uh, the Viet Cong were the uh, guerrilla forces on the side. The Viet Cong, they had no, no uniforms. They were just pajamas, and that's about all. Anywhere they could disrupt our progress with the people was what they wanted to do. And if it involved a disruption of humanitarian efforts, uh, that was it. Intimidate the people to not befriend and not trust the Americans. The Viet Cong were there, and should they know that a certain village received help from us, then they in turn would, would have harm caused to them by the Viet Cong, either to those people that may have talked or to their family. And I'm talking deaths. So if somebody were to ask you a question and you know that if you answered it, you, you may be killed, would you answer the question? Question for the enemy. Move out. In a book by uh, John Cl Plaster, who I served with, called uh, The Secret Commandos, uh, he talks about uh, Sog in 1968 had 100% casualty rate, and that's why they called it extremely hazardous duty. And everybody in the particular unit I was supposed to go to was either killed, wounded, or uh, missing in action. And there were some guys who weren't hit, but there were some other guys who were hit multiple times, and uh, they had some very high casualty rates throughout the war. And in that book, uh, it's related about 18 teams were uh, either uh, completely overrun or l lost and never heard from again. You were working with uh, either Vietnamese or Chinese or Cambodian uh, mercenaries. And uh, every now and then you got a bad guy who was on your team. And every now and then you'd have a team that was never heard from again.